Hey there, everyone. Welcome into another edition of Player Spotlight. Today, I'm joined by the young and talented and handsome solo later for Sanguine Esports, Yarkor. Yarkor, thanks for taking the time, man. We normally start off these uh, these player spotlights by talking about where you grew up. So talk to me about what it was like growing up. Where did you do that? And, uh, and tell me all about it. I grew up in Colombia, in a city called Santa Marta. Santa Marta is a city like near the beach. So there is like, I don't know, it's always hot. <laughs> like it's always summer there with half seasons there. And I don't know, it was like the normal guy. Just going to school, playing soccer with my friends and all the stuff. Yeah, I was gonna ask. I know soccer is huge in South America. Do you have uh, Do you have a team that you root for? You got a favorite squad that you root for? No, I used to when I was in back in high school, but but now I just don't watch the sport at all. So just mm. play games today. So <laughs> typical folk. Uh, Laser focused on Smite. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, I think that's fair to say. So when did you uh, d did you have any brothers or sisters that you that you grew up with? Yeah, I have a little brother. Uh, he's like ten years younger than me. Mm. <laughs> so I'm twenty two and he's twelve. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> like the big difference. So yeah, yeah. He must uh, he must think what you do is pretty cool. Do you guys ever talk about it? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. He sometimes watch me. He just play other games. He just never like it as my at all. But hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. He'll come around. We'll we'll, we'll yeah, get him yeah. eventually. When did you first start playing games? Do you remember? Were you a PC gamer from the beginning? Did you have a, a console? What did you get started on? I think it was a Play One, like the first PlayStation. Mm -hmm. I remember I play a lot of soccer games there. I play. I think it was called Pepsi Man. Mm. I don't know if you remember Pepsi Man. Was Sounds guy. familiar. Yeah, so I remember playing that game a lot in the play. Then I move on into I think another console, and then when I have that console, I have I was a a laptop gamer for a while. Mm. I actually when I first start playing in my I play on a laptop. We okay. don't even have a, like a mouse plug or something. You with the mouse pad of the laptop. So, oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> you were a trackpad player is what you're telling me. Yeah. The beginning. Oh, yeah. No, my friend. I'm, I'm, so, f I'm so glad you found a mouse because that is impossible <laughs> yeah. to, to play with that, I'm sure. When, uh, when did you start playing Smite? Was it in the, the open beta or was it a little bit later? No, it was a little bit later. It was, I think, season two was it starting, I think. When I start playing, so I actually miss all season one and the beta and everything all that. What uh, I know you aren't weren't initially a solo laner when you first got into competitive, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. What were some of your favorite gods that you gravitated towards whenever you first started? I used to play the ADC a lot, so I love playing. I don't know Apollo, Anhur, Uller, those gods. Hoi back in the day, I usually play those gods like all the time. Thor too. But Mm. Not a real story. I feel like everyone <laughs> loves playing Thor at the very beginning, yeah, and all the way through. That kid, that kid is just too fun, man. That kid is too fun. So you're you're playing a lot of hunters. Is that what you were playing when you first broke into ranked? Talk to me about when you you hit level thirty, you start playing ranked. What that experience was like for you? Yeah, when I started playing, I actually met someone that used to play support, and I think he was my first like smite friend that I found. And I always queue with him. It was fun because I was uh, ADC and he was support. So like we were like playing the same game, winning, losing, or whatever. But it was like with him. Then he stopped playing, and then I got bored about playing ADC because it was like use me with some random guy in my lane. So what to do? And then I was, and, and then it was there when I moved to jungle. I mm. played that role for I don't know two, three years. <laughs> Man, you realized early that all games come down to jungle diff. <laughs> Smart man. You no, might as well no. uh, th throw your hat in the ring. What, when uh, I'm assuming you hit a, a pretty good streak playing jungle and, and maybe even before an ADC, so you're getting into some of the higher level rank games. When yeah. did you first start getting into competitive? Do you remember who asked you or did you ask someone else to, to start a team? I was a normal ranked player. I used to play a lot of ranks back in the day. I was, I think my highest yellow that went before I got into competitive was Diamond something, three mm. or two. 
and then some guy uh, asked me if I can sub for his team because he they might need a suit for I think it was called the Smile Latam Cup or something. I go, mm -hmm. I can't remember the exact name. But I said, yeah, sure. I mean, I I was I play for fun when I start playing mm -hmm. Smile, and then when I have the opportunity and feel the all the environment of people like talking or the emotion that you feel when you play, then I was yo I like this, so I maybe try on my own. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I did. <laughs> did you uh, did you then replace the guy you subbed for, or, or what was your first team? Uh, yeah, I used to play jungle for the team for maybe I don't know three weeks, maybe a month. <laughs> mm. Then the team just disbanded because that, that was like a thing there. Team right. just disbanded because they didn't feel that they're winning, so they just move on and go next, trying to find another team. That's where people were doing back in the day. So. So you so you're sticking for jungle for a little bit. What what was the first season that you started playing competitive? Was it in season two or season three? I think it was season three at the beginning. Okay. Because All right, so you're so you're jungling yeah. season three. You're you're competing in, in some of the local tournaments and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I know it's a while before you move over to solo lane, but talk to me about some of your uh, your successes or non successes with some <laughs> other teams in the jungle. Do you feel like you had some good squads that that just didn't quite put it together? I think we we had I had a few a good team. It was in 2018, I believe. It was season four, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got to like the opportunity to compete on my like first LAN, I think it was in Bogota. It was again like, Nocturne's gaming. I was playing jungle for that team. I think you were there to be honest. I was there. I, think, I was there. Yeah, I was I gonna say I, I remember that set. Yeah, I think you were. You were there, like hosting the whole tournament or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I was there playing jungle. I remember in the finals. I think we lost three one against them. We right. have like two close games that we could have won. But besides that, I don't think that I have like many success playing jungle. I mean, it was fun. And people yeah. started to recognize me because of that, because I was just a sick player. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember that set fairly well. I was I was kind of sick before I even traveled, so I spent the majority <laughs> of my time in the hotel room. But I remember the food yeah. in Bogota was unbelievable. Uh, yeah. I had some some great ceviche <laughs> there, and shout outs to Level Up people because <laughs> they uh, they took me out for that, and it was delicious. Yeah. Um, so that was that was your first land experience. I was going to ask you about that. I mean, I know that later on down the line, you don't make a land in America for quite some time, but no. at that time, were your parents supportive of you traveling to, to Bogota? Was that a far trip um, for you, or were they excited, or, or did they not really yeah, understand? Yeah, they were, they were excited. My mom, I just live with my mom, and she was like so happy that I could do what I love, because she know that I love, I just love playing games, so she was happy to me that have the opportunity to see me on the stage, so mm -hmm. it was a good experience for everyone. <laughs> Absolutely. That was a cool land. I remember that. It was a pretty crowded little area, too. I mean, they, you yeah, guys had some fans uh, turn up. Yeah, it was a lot of people. In just, I think it was like a little stadium. I can't remember yeah. what is that. But it was it like, was like, a, it was like an event area. tent that they put Yeah, out. yeah. It's like, um, uh, but a big yeah. one. A really big yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> It was it was full, man. It was full. A lot of fans uh, in, in Colombia. There, it was a lot of fun that land, no doubt about it. Um, so, so you're playing jungle. That that event doesn't go the way you want it to, but close. How did you meet up with the rest of the Sanguine guys? Is that when you moved over to Solo Lane? Was was to fill a role on this yeah, team? Yeah, yeah. After we lost against Nocturnes, we use like wait for a little, then you stuck as a team, and then some players just didn't want to keep playing the game because they want to done something with your life so i guess it's fine i really want to keep playing i really want to compete so i actually met oxy in person i mean he mm -hmm. he's behind me right now <laughs> <laughs> there he I, is I met, the coach for a second uh, yeah the coach i meet him in colombia actually but i meet him before that we were like friends and all we just used to talk and play and he has this squad he used to play with i think it was panito i used mm -hmm. nitro and then happened like the same with the other guy with Ron Genshin today. They just want to make like the best team that we could have make. So uh, when they announced that it won't be a international competition, so we have to compete for NA, is when we like make this roster. 
because it would be like the best roster that you could have with all five, I think. So I say uh, it was, I think it was just a spot free. And I say I could play it. I have to play any role. So it would be fine for me. What did you and think about Solo at first? Did you did you like playing it right away? Did you hate it? How are you feeling about it? I mean, at the beginning it was fun because it was like, you're going to like use five with the other guy. You want to win trades, lose trades, I don't know, have a little bit of impact. And when it was a jungler, I always feel that having someone that is a winning lane, like most of the time, it can feel like so much room to your jungler to play around that. So if he want to play around my lane, he knows that I will build for him or we when I kill everyone that comes to my lane. So I always want to be that guy for my jungler. So Panito and I, Panito and I end up like doing well most of the time on SML. So. Yeah, I think you've become that guy for <laughs> sure. I, I wanted to ask, I, I know it's a little bit all over the place, but I know I want to ask this, and I think I'll forget if I don't right now. One of the things that I'm really impressed with uh, is the way that you guys as a team play the map really well. And I've heard, I don't know if this is true, I I'm hoping that you can confirm or deny this, <laughs> that you are a guy that that is really involved in how you guys play the map. A lot of your late game objective shot calling, all that kind of stuff. W is that true, number one? And if so, how did you get that game knowledge? Did you play another MOBA before Smite, or do you feel like it just kind of came to you? Uh, yeah, it's true. I like mostly the shot color like most of the time. When it comes to objectives, I always like, we all talk a lot, but I think my mm -hmm. voice is the one that hears the most when we are like focusing on playing. So yeah, that's true. And I didn't like it. Might was my first MOBA, mm -hmm. but I, I used to watch a lot of people play in the game. That is what I think that I learned a lot. So, for example, when I was playing like jungle, I used to watch adapting a lot, for example. And even though all the people are streaming, even it's not my own role, I used to watch it and like understand a lot of what they're doing. Then with time, I used to play a lot of roles. So right now I'm like a solo main, but I can I think I can play every single role if I have to. Just for the guys. <laughs> Man, the the multi role superstar in the making, your core. I love it, man. I, I'm always impressed with, with that. That uh, when people come into Smite and that haven't played other MOBAs and and get a lot of map knowledge, I think it's one of the hardest things to do in the entire game. So certainly impressed about that. But okay, gotta get locked in back. You're playing solo lane. You're with this Sanguine roster. You guys didn't exactly take North America by storm right away. It's I'm not saying that you guys were at the bottom, but you weren't that top team immediately. What were some of the things that you think held you back early on, and, and, and how did you fix those to become uh, one of the top teams in, in the North American minor league circuit? I think we, we you get used to what we really want to do. So when we realize that what we want to do, we just do it. So uh, like maybe our laning phase wasn't that strong because we have like high ping. So in high ping, it's like hard to hit every single one of your abilities. So we're going to like struggle and trade. For example, Nitroid has, he used to have the highest pin of all of us. So it's going to be hard for him to trade as an ADC <laughs> because he's going to yeah. like the struggle hitting those autos. So we you figured out what it worked for us and it was like playing as five. So we did that and we get so used to that. We even today, we still think it was our, our biggest strength. So yeah. Absolutely. That's been your identity since since joining the SPL. You guys start to find some success. You you get ready to make your first LAN. That Sanguine team makes their first LAN. And you hit uh, one of your first roadblocks. Do you remember the, the discussion on trying to get your visa, being unable to, and, and, and how that whole situation went down? Yeah, the first time, <laughs> it was, I think... I have the opportunity to travel to the US before. I think it was 2019, I think. I can't remember actually what was the day. But I have I, I qualify with another team. I think I, I have like a year missing right now, but I don't know. That sure. I qualify for a land. And it was when the the ECL was hosting the international tournaments. Okay. Yep. So it was when the ECL was hosting the, those tournaments, I think I had the opportunity to compete on a LAN. And I did like everything and they just denied the, the visa. Hmm. <laughs> My visa just got denied. So it was, well, I'm, I'm going to keep trying and 
just wait for the opportunity to pop because I mean, even though maybe it wasn't like the correct time to me for travel, right now I'm able to be here. So I'm just happy to. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Last year, you guys get, qualify again. You know, you're getting ready to come, come for the world championship qualification process. You can't get a visa again. I imagine that one was a little bit of a, of a tougher pill to swallow. Yeah, that was harder for sure. But I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Yeah, and, and, and you guys get Haddocks to, to come in and, and sub for you. I'm sure you're rooting for the boys to do really well. But at the yeah. same time, Haddocks is arts getting a lot of praise for how well he's playing for the roster. Were you sitting at home like, come on, guys, I could have done this and more, you know? Were, were you feeling that way at all, watching the boys? Nah, I was just rooting for them to win. Like, I, I mean, I know they're probably going to play that better, but... It was happy for me to watch them like improve a lot because when they were screaming with him, with him I was like there. So like most, most of the time I was with them trying to watch them how they do it. So it was like that I must have been crazy to watch, hard. man. I mean, not only <laughs> do they start playing well, but all of a sudden they end up qualifying to go to the world championship. Do you remember yeah. watching the, the game that, that sealed the deal that made sure that they were going to Worlds? Yeah, but I, I can remember right away what was. I think the game that I, I remember the most was against like Space Station when Andy get the Penta defending with the Scylla. Mm. I was like, oh my God, what, what are they doing? So <laughs> it was like so they guilty. To but, but yeah, I think they did win at the end, but it was like, what the fuck is this? But it was fun to watch. It was a lot. <laughs> I, remember, I remember that defense um, as well. That was pretty crazy. But they end up qualifying. Get, getting to play on the world stage, I mean, what, was it hard at all to watch them to play at Worlds, or were you still just excited? I was excited for them most of the time. So, I mean, I, I wish I could be there, but I, I, that is what I think I do like most of the time, even in the game. So, I mean, if I lose, I just learn from that and go next. If I don't have the opportunity, I will keep trying until I get the opportunity. Love <laughs> the mindset, to, man. I love it. I love it absolutely. Because you do get that opportunity this yeah. year. I mean, it, that must have been so exciting to hear that that Blaine and Sanguine had gotten the spot in the SPL. <laughs> he picks you guys as the roster. Do you remember that uh, discussion? Like, hey, you guys are going to get a chance to be in the SPL. Do you remember how, how what that was like? Yeah, I think it was like sad and was like so happy at the same time. Because uh, when they announce how it's gonna be everything, uh, we actually submit like a profile of all of five as a team to every organization because that is how it works at the beginning. So we actually have like a couple like close conversation with a few organizations, but like nothing just to seal the deal or anything. But we we kind of like told with I think it was four of the eight I think it was mm -hmm. eighteen yeah. And then, like, last minute, when he got the call from Cooper saying that your rock is dropping, so we might have the opportunity to, to give the spot to Sanguine, he was so happy about it. And he was so happy for them because we, was like, we were sad that we couldn't, like, continue this journey with him. But then mm -hmm. we, when, the, when we have, like, that news, we, have, we will all be so happy. <laughs> Ended up working out perfectly. How nervous were you for the visa situation coming in, though, that knowing that you needed it? Were you nervous? Yeah, yeah, I was nervous. I have to fly again. I was in the plane, like, just thinking. I feel like a week before my interview, so I just prepare everything, and the day I was like, hmm, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Just waiting to see. There is always a lot of people on the Bogota embassy, so you have like to wait a lot to get mm -hmm. the the interview going on. So I don't know. Maybe I think this time that like, everything just line up and it was perfect because it was perfect. I just yeah I stayed with the consul for like two minutes or three and he said yeah everything is alright you are free to go. 
Um, yeah. That must have been the best feeling because you know they've yeah. given you problems in the past. That must have been the biggest <laughs> weight off your shoulders. Was it? Uh, how did your parents feel about you moving to America to co- to come and work here? Were Were they uh, a little nervous about it? Yeah, my mom was like, "How is it gonna be? I wanna be. I wanna see everything before. You gonna be okay? Are you sure?" <laughs> Yo, you talk to me when you're there. Be careful with everything. <laughs> yeah. But it, it's a good happy. reminder in case yeah, you haven't keep it up with her. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You gotta give her a call. But, it's a reminder for me too. I should call my mom for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do yeah, that later yeah. on today. Um, what uh was was this your first time coming to America to to live here, or have you have you been here in the past? No, this is my first time. This is actually my first time traveling outside my country. I used wow. live in Colombia all the time. Yeah. It's a big first like, step. Yeah. This is like my first time just getting out of the country and I really enjoy it when I when I land. It was so fun. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have to went to Miami too. So I met the Miami airport. Mm. It was pretty good experience too. Absolutely. A little bit unfortunate for you that uh, that you're that you're living here during one of the few times that yeah. you can't go out and do anything at all. But it, what did you expect? Is it kind of what you expected from from living here, or did you have some different expectations? Yeah, I think. I mean, I, I think I just find it still like crazy that I, I'm here, <laughs> even like eight months before everything. It's just like crazy to me that I I was able to be here in this time. Yeah. I just wish that we had the opportunity to play at land because that is what I really wanted. <laughs> that experience yep. to be in that environment that is what I really want. But come on, we have to <laughs> keep going, you know, like, <laughs> and wait because the opportunity will arise, arrive sooner or later. The Yarkor mantra, just keep working and the opportunity will yeah. come. Absolutely. Hey, at least you guys all have lower ping now, right? We got yeah. at least uh, some sort of benefit at the very least. Uh, real quick, before I let you go, I got to ask about your success this year and, and how well it's been going. I mean, no one was really sure. I feel like it's you guys have been so good that it feels weird to think back to the very beginning of the year where a lot of people were saying, yeah, they might be okay. You know, they could be seventh seed or, or sixth seed maybe. You guys were first seed during phase one. Did you expect that level of success? I mean, we, we expect. I think like our discussion was that we expect to not be last. That is what we really want. We don't want to be the last team. We don't want to like give the reason to all the people saying that these guys, I don't know why these guys are here. These guys don't deserve it because there was a lot of people talking that when we get the spot. Because I know just Sanguine get it, but Sanguine like didn't have the chance to talk to other teams. They just pick the same roster and they like blame it on that. So these guys are like no SPL worth. So when we came here, we just want to play at our best and just try it. Just try our best every single game. That is what we really want to do when we came here. And it, at the end of the day, it became like being good for us because we just won a lot of games. We just lose a couple too. But we learn from every single set and we end up in a good spot in our fear phase. <laughs> Yeah, I think it's fair to say that you uh, you proved all those people wrong, uh, that, that you ended up definitely belonging, and not only belonging, but being a top-end contender. Have your expectations and, and desires changed? I mean, now, I think it's safe to say you're not going to be eighth this season. <laughs> what what are your goals now? Are you aiming as high as uh, expecting to win Worlds? Yeah, I think that is what we all want right now, especially me. I really want to be able to, I mean, win or lose, I think it doesn't matter. I think you want the people to have fun watching Sanguine, to enjoy your game. So we're going to have battle up. We're going to maybe win some, lose some. That is what I think. But like the excitement of the people watching the games, the same excitement that I have when I just start playing, watching the old teams playing, that is what I really want for the people and for us. If we I think win, it's safe so- to say, I think it's safe to say you have delivered on that uh, on yeah. that hope there, Yarkor. I think you will continue to do so. Always great to ch- get a chance to talk to you. You got any shout outs uh, you want to give before we let you go? Mm, I want to shout out to my mom. <laughs> I want to thank her for everything that she done for me because yeah, my family is her and my little brother <laughs> and three cats. 
important. <laughs> so I want you to thank her for everything that you have done. I think I wouldn't be here if it, was, if it wasn't for her. Absolutely. And this is a good reminder for all the viewers at home. Call your parents. Tell them you love them. Yeah. Yeah, they'll, all, they'll always appreciate it. <laughs> thanks so much for the time, Yarkor, and thanks everyone for watching at home. Let us know down in the comments who you want to see next on Player Spotlight, and we'll see you next time here for the next episode. <laughs>